Good morning, good day, good, ev good evening, everyone. It is a great pleasure to welcome our latest speaker in the Taiwan Expert Series, Dr. Guiming Zhang. Uh, she received her doctorate in political science at Columbia University in New York. Following that, uh, she went to the University of Alberta and was a postdoctoral fellow at the China Institute. Here, she's an expert of uh, religion and politics and comparative politics. And she did a, a tremendous amount of really valuable fieldwork in China, um, but she's now um, moved to uh, Taiwan in her new role as an assistant professor in the Department of Political Science at the very distinguished National Taiwan University. And today I've asked her to come in and talk a little bit about her new project, which looks at a religious exchange uh, between people on both sides of the Taiwan Strait. Uh, now, this is taking place in a context in which all sorts of exchanges, especially the political ones, have become very difficult between Taiwan and China, but religious exchange continues, and this is something that you're looking at. Can you tell us a, a bit about this uh, fascinating topic of study and maybe how you're approaching it at this stage? Okay, uh, Ashley, thank you for the invitation. Like, I, hi, audience. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, this is uh, a very, actually, like Ashley say, a very fascinating phenomenon. So, uh, the first thing I think I would like to say is that um, uh, there's really nothing natural about cross-religious exchange. Why I said it was not natural was because that, um, you know, the religious exchange uh, involved the cross-border movement mm -hmm. of people and the things. Movement of people across these borders, like this uh, bo uh, sovereign borders that were heavily guarded by both authorities. It, happened only just recently so that's why i say there was like nothing natural about this exchange and so this uh the 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 frequent exchange happened maybe i think the just started maybe like the past 20 to 30 years mm -hmm. so from a historical perspective it was really actually a very short period of time and so that's uh the way i uh, uh, approach it so both the actors on both sides of the exchange, they actually have dramatic like, difference in their, either in their constituencies and their institutional incentives. So I see that how this institutional asymmetry actually create uh, troubles mm -hmm. for the Chinese authorities to influence Taiwan. So that's what I'm looking at right now. So, um, so Taiwan and China um, obviously are really different societies in terms of how the state interacts with religious organizations. In Taiwan, there's an awful lot of religious freedom. Um, that's not the case in China, especially now, especially under Xi Jinping, where the authorities have been placing more pressure on religious organizations of all kinds. So I would imagine that there's kind of an asymmetry that takes place when um, these religious organizations in China that are subjected to more state control are interacting with these relatively free uh, and in some cases quite old religious organizations in Taiwan. Um, what, what form does this interaction take? Uh, is, it, is, it, is it conferences? Is it study? Uh, uh, type uh, exchanges? Do, do Chinese come to Taiwanese temples or vice versa? Uh, and, and what faiths are we talking about primarily in the context of your research? Okay, so my focus, my primary focus is uh, popular religions. And the popular religions in Taiwan, it's, um, it, it, it's a multi, uh, it's like the, the it, it's focus, like what the actors here, they are mostly um, Temples, temples that worship a variety of uh, deities, and uh, and also uh, the uh, social organizations among various religious uh, religious personnel, and so those are the primary actors uh, on the Taiwanese side. 
And on the Chinese side, they are, um, yeah, there are temples and, uh, but in general, this uh, cultural ex uh, religious exchange uh, in China is are highly monitored, supervised by the Chinese state. And uh, so the actors there, they are primarily, uh, they have a, a semi-official affiliations, like they are in the uh, religious patriotic uh, organizations. The, the ex cross-strait exchange in the name of religions, they don't, that you could see the, the actors from both sides are quite different. And they, they, they come in a variety of forms. And one form, like on the side of the Taiwanese people, especially temples, I think the most common form for them would be just to, to go there, to go to China and do a pilgrimage to their so-called uh, ancestral home. And uh, uh, the, in, in terms of the religious social organizations, I think they, they visit uh, mostly the patriotic association, uh, pa religious patriotic, uh, patriotic associations in China, such as the Taoist Association, the Buddhist Association. Uh, they would sit down, they would talk, talk about the state of religion or state of Taoism in both societies and how they could cooperate. Or then they would have like this, this kind of like uh, academic exchange. Uh, and, uh, you know, as a host, uh, the, the Chinese side will in general take you to a different, uh, visit different temples. And at night, in general, they always come with a banquet. And then everybody would, <laughs> everybody was, is, would be like really happy and just like a party. And that's, that's a typical uh, religious exchange like. And that's one form. And uh, one form uh, would be that they would perform rituals together when there is a natural disaster. Um, that that that's a uh, one form too. And so uh, it's uh, it's um, that that's that's the how it would look like. Like what religious exchange look like looks like in in, in close trade. Okay, so I guess one thing that comes to mind is that much of this exchange sounds like it's between um, members of Taiwanese faith communities and officials in China, uh, but but then your your mention of uh, disaster relief scenarios bringing people together to worship in common sounds like you know members of of two faith communities from China and Taiwan do kind of come together in that context. How much? exchange is there between members of different faith communities at the level of talking about Taoism in their lives or in their worship or, or talking about um, practices of Buddhism, for example? Do you, do you feel like the human to human exchange is still continuing um, despite political obstacles? Yeah, now it's uh, now in this time, it's, I think the physical exchange like uh, again you know is uh, that physical exchange has ceased uh, for, uh, because of the pandemic yeah and I but I do know that they still uh, communicate via like WeChat and uh, just mostly WeChat and uh, you know obviously the this uh, the, the all sorts of forms of uh, virtual communications, they still do that. Um, yeah, that, that's in the past two years, it's, it's been quiet. But that's not because of the political tension, it's because of the pandemic. The pandemic, like w when it's safe to travel again, I don't know when that would happen. Yeah, it's really hard for us to just uh, fathom like a time, but I would expect there will, will be an explosion of religious exchange across straight be it um, like initiated from the faith communities or the, the faith communities back, uh, backed by the political authorities, I would see that, uh, that, that, that's, that scenario to happen after, you know, the, the end, if there is an, ever an end or oh, after the beginning of frequent international travel, uh, that, that would definitely would happen. Um, yes. 
do you feel like these exchanges um, are intended to serve political purposes from Beijing's view? Uh, you know, in other words, is there the hope that somehow through these religious exchanges uh, that China can influence Taiwan and and viewing it the other way around, um, do you think Taiwanese go into these these exchanges hoping to influence Chinese politics in any way? Uh, I don't want to put politics where it, it doesn't belong, but you're an expert of religion and politics, and I'm wondering how you see this. Okay, so yeah, the, obviously um, the the Chinese authorities would hope to use this this culture or religious exchange will serve some uh, political purposes like but what i what i've been observed is this uh, indeed uh a lot of those people from faith communities or uh this uh popular religious communities they identify and the certain spiritual authorities from their ancestral home but that's it, you know, that that's probably it. And does this common ancestry, ancestry uh, can, can, the, can this common ancestry uh, translate to your political choice? And that, that's the two different things. So when we, when we try to measure the effectiveness of, um, I mean, it's really hard to measure the exact political effect, uh, the, the effect maybe, of this uh, Chinese influence. But if you look at the, um, the, our national elections, you will see like this probably doesn't work very well. Um, and so somehow there's this, this connection between one's uh, spiritual cultural identity and their political identity and that's uh, what I see here and also I think this like I said earlier that there's this uh, institutional asymmetry between both societies and uh, so we, we often forget that um, you know even the religious community in China uh, they are the subject of the Chinese the Chinese Communist Party's United Front work. And so would they as the agents, can, can we consider them as the agents of the Chinese state? Uh, probably not so much. They have their own agenda. They, they care about their uh, survival. And so, but this survival, their survival involved like having to uh, perform certain political tasks. And so, but, it, um, but um, what I see is even on the Chinese side, there's this uh, patron client um, problem and uh, that the religious communities or religious leaders, religious people from China, they don't really, uh, they, what they care more about is uh, not so much the political tax that they were, a given, but what we can get uh, from this religious exchange, like this, um, say for instance, there are certain rituals that were revived in mm -hmm. China because of this relig uh, the, this religious exchange. The Chinese um, popular religions they brought back certain ritual or is ritual aspect back to China, which was which was seized for, you know, like for, for a long period of time, you know, at least in public. And uh, also like if we look at the Taiwanese side and uh, I think the Taiwanese religious communities, they are quite, uh, they are well aware the uh, China's territorial ambition, um, their sovereign, uh, sovereignty claim over Taiwan, like this is it's public and everybody knows about it. Um, and so they themselves, like the, what drive this is religious exchange is like common ancestry maybe, and, but also this drive, for instance, the, the, the most renowned Mazu, uh, Mazu, the, the uh, cross, uh, cross-strait exchange, 
I think most uh, scholars will tell you that uh, it's right. It's driven by the competition. We think the Taiwanese religious communities, like they try, they were hoping to gain some spiritual, uh, spiritual authority, like spiritual capital from their exchange with the home ancestry, but their audience is still uh, Thai, their, 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 their communities, their religious communities. And also one thing that is exactly the kind of influence that a, tri a religious leader in Taiwan can influence the, uh, can influence their um, the the broader religious community is very actually very limited in terms of the, their political options, and uh, so who would let's say if they could uh, if the Chinese authorities could could turn the political choices of certain religious uh, uh, leaders. I don't think they're, 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 they're it's, it's the people seek, seek, uh, seek spiritual guidance from them, but not political guidance. I think in this, uh, in this aspect, uh, like the overall impression I got from the, the, the effectiveness of uh, the political use of religion by the Chinese authorities is actually not, uh, not, not well, yeah, it's, it's not very effective. Okay. Uh, well, this is all really fascinating and I, I wish you the best with this, uh, exciting area of research. It's, it's, it's wonderful as a scholar to have an area of research where there's, there's ongoing interaction and you're able to look at maybe a facet of relations between China, China, China and Taiwan that's less affected during these extraordinary pandemic times than, than maybe other uh, areas of exchange, political change, exchange in particular. I wanna ask you uh, about your experience as a scholar educated in the United States and you know, postdoctoral fellowship uh, here in Canada. What was it like to go back to Taiwan and to begin to develop expertise about Taiwan as a case. You mentioned uh, before the interview that you're, you're teaching a class about Taiwan's political economy and its development. But, you know, prior to teaching this class, you, you hadn't been a, a student of Taiwan's political economy. So how, how has this transit transition been for you? And how have you developed some of the Taiwanese expertise that you have, you know, to be a lecturer in a class like this? And <laughs> What tips do you have for, for people uh, who want to develop their own Taiwan expertise? Uh, yeah, yeah, that was, uh, that was, that, that, yeah, you're right. Uh, it's really like, okay. So before I read, I, like you, you mentioned that I, 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 yeah, I told you that I, I was teaching, I, I, I'm teaching this course, the political economy of development in Taiwan. Uh, but I'm actually a China expert and, you know, like, uh, your first, your first job, your first year of teaching, you don't always get to teach you, uh, what do you really want to teach? Uh, but I look at it as, uh, it, it's a great, it's actually an opportunity for me to get to know, uh, Taiwan, you know, like even, even though I'm Taiwanese, but I'm not, I'm not Taiwan expert. I, I have to relearn a lot of those, uh, the histories and the development. Uh, about my 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 home country, it's yeah like any other aspiring scholar uh, who who wish to enter a field. I did a lot of like mm, like I dig into the literature. I I I ask experts like the real experts. And seeking advice on the syllabus and uh, did a lot of prep work, <laughs> do a lot of readings. You know, it's like anyone that wants to restart a new research, uh, start a new a research. And yeah, it takes a lot, a lot of time. And uh, yeah, I'm just like, uh, and but. It's been very fulfilling, like to get to know the the the, the, the land that I'm living in, and um, yeah, for, for so I, I don't think that I can give anyone who wants to be, let's say, Taiwan experts, any uh, tip. 
but I would say um, just um, um, yeah, like um, just ask, I guess, like uh, seek advice from other experts, and uh, you know and uh consult on the syllabi and uh yeah again all sorts of perspectives and uh, but i think i'm very fortunate in the sense that um like if you consider myself as a, like let's say a field researcher like i'm immersed in the place uh in this place in the sub the taiwan is a subject of study I'm immersed in this society now because I obviously I live here and uh, everything. So I, I get informed by what matters here. So that's kind of the advantage of being here. And as an aspiring Chinese scholar. Uh, so, you know, like uh, if you can, um, like it, it, it's great to just to step into the land and step, spend some time here. And uh, yeah, I think uh, it, it would really tr transform the way you look at the society. And uh, yeah, I, I'm privileged to be able to do that here uh, while I'm teaching this course. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks so much for your time. It was a real pleasure to speak to you about your ongoing research and this transition that you have experienced, you know, physically. Oh, very challenging, um, yes. I, I think I speak for people who are outside Taiwan that, you know, it is a very enviable position to be yeah. uh, in, in the land that is, is part of what you study uh, and to have all of this data and kind of the pulse of the society, you know, all around you. Yes. And what I didn't mention is that, you you know, you, do, you actually do live on the campus of, of Taiwan's most distinguished university. So you've got this, this hubbub of, uh, of academic, uh, discussion going on yes so that's that's got to be really thrilling anyway, yeah thank you so much for your time it's lovely to see you again and I'm, I'm, I'm I look forward to seeing you again in person as soon as possible that's okay. Okay. Yeah. okay thank you for the interview and I look forward to hosting you here in Taiwan yes come see my my faculty housing okay <laughs> <laughs> It's like 50 years old. It's it's really yeah. old, like any other faculty housing and things are falling apart. But the campus is awesome. Like you should come. <laughs> I've been before. I look forward to seeing it again. Yeah. Okay. Speak soon.